Hello. Um, I started thinking about the sequel to the film um, pretty much. I was actually, we, we always thought about the film as being a uh, recreation of a continuous character. So when we were making the first movie, the, the dream we had at that time was to, uh, if, if the film was successful, that we'd try and create an ongoing kind of horror character, a bit like the Freddy or the Jason kind of characters that are in. Um, Oh, okay. oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we always had the idea of, um, of making it into a sequelized character, and the first film worked very well, so it was only a matter of time until we got around to putting the sequel together. Um, we wanted to um, focus on taking the audience into the character, exploring him more, because I think at the end of the first film, um, you don't really get much of a sense of who the character is, so this film was really about um, allowing the audience to come face to face with Mick Taylor, and literally put the audience in the chair with him so you can basically um, find yourself face to face with the serial killer in the course of the conversation at the end of the film, learn more about his motivation and psychology and uh, just how deeply evil he is. Eh, ma visto il successo e la crescita di questo personaggio, pensate di, appunto, di renderlo un personaggio eh, seriale, quindi vedremo altre imprese, Questa, questo vorrei chiederlo anche alla signora produttrice. There we are. Um, it's, it's really, um, the potential is there. We were discussing, the, a lot of people have asked that question, Wolf Creek 3, Wolf Creek 4. Um, it's a matter of, as Greg um, found the second one, of finding a story that um, builds on the character and a new way of presenting the action. So there, there's a lot of thinking about number three, but we can't promise anything at this stage. I think, I think just to add to that, the, um, ultimately, you know, the audiences decide whether a film has ongoing films or not. So if, if there's a really great reaction to this film and the character, people embrace the film like the first film. Um, for me personally, I'd love to make another one because I love working with John and I love, um, you know, I love being in the outback and making films like this. And we had a great time shooting this film and a really good team put the film together. Um, so I would love to do it. It's really up to the audience to choose um, to, you know, if the film is successful, then we'd love to do it, ultimately. But again, as Helen was saying, it's really about um, finding, a, finding an angle about why you want to make the film, because part of the reason we took so long to make this, the second film was that uh, making it, we had, it took us a long time to work out what the film should be and how do you make a film that's a sequel to a film that was so sort of loved by people. So we did want to make a film that a bit disappointed and so we're very careful about spending enough time to develop the character, have a point of view, explore a different set of themes in the film. So it was a worthy successor to a film that a lot of people had uh, a fair amount of respect for. Uh, yeah, I think the, um, the idea I was getting across with that statement was that um, <clears throat> um, I think that where Mick comes from as a character and, and parts of his um, personality uh, are made up of the kind of repressed or sort of shadow side of the Australian national identity. I think that um, every culture and every country has its own specific set of um, historical um, events that shape the nation and shape the personality of the people in that country. Um, Australia has its own particular and interesting kind of history that we drew a lot from to uh, develop a character. And in one sense, Nick is kind of like an inverted version of um, the character from Crocodile Dundee, in the sense that Crocodile Dundee as a character is an um, iconic collection of Australian archetypes put into one character, um, which it, it is generally kind of, a lot of those qualities are true, but I think it was time to basically invert those qualities and talk about the dark side and the repressed side of the Australian national psyche, which essentially was, you know, a homophobic, racist, sexist, horrible, vile, serial killer character, who on the surface looks like and comes across as a nice, friendly, helpful character, but in fact is, uh, carrying very deep, dark, shadow side of his personality. And I think that's part of the enjoyment and entertainment value of the character is um, seeing someone who appears one particular way and then suddenly the, the mask is dropped and you reveal this horrifying monster that lurks beneath it. So that's part of the interest in the character. That's sort of what I was referring to with that statement. Um, uh, there's, there's nothing no. appropriate in me. <laughs> 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 I was the most inappropriate character I've ever seen, so you know, this is juicy shit. <laughs> I mean, I don't, my initial reaction would be, you know, the answer would be no, that um, 
you know, the song was chosen because it's an iconic piece of Australian um, pop culture. Um, there's, a, there's an undercurrent of creepiness when you listen to the lyrics of the song that I could pick up on when I was listening to it, and that's why it was in there. Um, it's, it's interesting and it's kind of surprising of the turn of events of this, you know, well-known children's entertainment having this horrible, you know, situation unfold. Um, I don't, I mean, we wouldn't pull it out of the film because it's, it's, it wasn't in there because of Rolf Harris, it was in there because of its cultural relationship to people who knew the song. And it was, it's really there about the weird combination of what the character does to get out of the situation. So, I mean, I don't think we're, I mean, we don't feel like it should go from well, that song. No, no, to be honest, that's a, a ludicrous thing. I mean, it's like saying, uh, and that Tarantino gets halfway through and glorious bastards and realizes about this horrible person called Hitler, so he better pull pull the plug, you know. It's, it's I don't think it's really makes sense. It's an interesting question though actually. I mean I haven't really I haven't really considered that. Um, but I think that there's a there's a, there's a separation between what the song is as a piece of iconography and the reality of the performer being, you know, charged. He's not guilty yet though. Yeah. There may be, yeah, sure. There, there may be, uh, people are welcome. I mean, people people can make that assumption or make that criticism. We'll be happy to wear that. We would be. The song is an iconic um, uh, stadium song, so... Um, and I think as John, yeah, John said, the film is full of inappropriateness. I mean, the, the basic Wolf Creek is a very inappropriate experience. It's irresponsible for making it its finest. So... The first, that's when the first one uh, happened with Lewis, with Murdoch was, um, yeah, with the first, he didn't call it, was the, it? The first one was, was banned in, in um, Northern Territory because of the court case of Bradley Murdoch, was on top at that time, and so we had a letter from the Chief Justice of the Northern Territory, um, the, the, the head of the, the, the Political correct, correctness and proof of No, actually, the Chief Justice of North Territory sent a letter and said you can't release it until the trial's done. So they thought we might influence the case, um, which was interesting to see the film. I mean, essentially, an entertainment horror film without the kind of um, impact. We thought it was kind of amusing, but in fact, it, that would took it very, very seriously. So there may be some kind of backlash to that. It'd be great if there was some backlash, actually, because it's interesting when, if you make, I mean, as a film maker, you want to make something that actually get people, gets people talking and communicating and arguing or loving or hating the film. The worst thing is to have a film that no one reacts to at all, so. Yeah.